MMORPG games have a ton of content, from epic quests where you help others to life skills where you can relax and forge your own little existence, dungeons and raids rewarding powerful weapons and armour, or hidden areas where the only reward is the warm fuzzy feeling you get for finding a secret. The content you personally enjoy will help guide the game you play. There's no perfect design, but the idea of progression on a journey is universal across most RPG games. You adventure, you experience, and you grow, and within that progression there are two primary schools of design, vertical progression and horizontal progression. So let's discuss what they are, the strengths and weaknesses of both, and the type of player that each appeal to. Quick note, this video is sponsored by Guild Wars 2, which is super convenient for me because I was going to use them as an example anyway. Welcome, I'm Josh Drive Hayes. I've played a lot of MMORPGs, and while each is magically different in its own unique way, they all broadly appeal to one of two demographics, people who like vertical progression and people who like horizontal progression, but what do these terms mean? Imagine a vertical line with increasing numbers marked on it, let's say from 1 to 10. This line represents power, with 1 being weak and 10 being strong. We can take anything from the game, any weapon or piece of armour or equipment, and place it somewhere on this scale. A bronze dagger in RuneScape may be a 1, an abyssal whip may be a 7, ultimately everything can be ranked. Vertical progression is the design of things at the top being the most desirable and things lower down simply being stepping stones used to reach the things at the top. You will go through the numbers from lower to higher, ultimately wanting to get to and remain at the highest number. If an MMORPG is a vertical progression game, this table ends up being taller than it is wide. The aim is to climb and stay there. This appeals to people who want the best stuff. It appeals to people who value power over the experience. Horizontal progression is slightly different. It's not that horizontal games don't have the vertical scale, it's that they spread wider than they go tall. You may have multiple items of the same general strength, but they're achieved in different ways. They may be situational, instead of objectively better. The scope of experience in the game is usually broader, and older content remains relevant a lot longer, at the expense of the power cap being generally lower. So let's look at some examples and discuss the strengths and weaknesses of both designs, and then maybe you'll discover which design you are most attracted to. I'm going to cover seven main aspects of the design debate. 1. Chasing power versus the process itself. 2. The viability of older content. 3. Balancing the power standards. 4. Power creep versus feature creep. 5. Stat or feature squishing. 6. The ability to take a break and then return to the game. And 7. The personal drive of social power or personal enjoyment. But before we analyse these seven points, a big thank you to Guild Wars 2 for agreeing to sponsor this video. I've played Guild Wars 2 since it launched all the way back in 2012, and it's been one of the few MMOs I've installed on every PC I've had since then, and finally, after like five years of coming soon, it's actually released on Steam. They've even released two very positive reviews. The latest expansion, End of Dragons, brings a ton of new content without invalidating the previous expansions, Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, but you don't need to buy anything to try the game. There is a massive free trial. The base game is free with no time limit, and if you do like it, it is a one-time purchase with no monthly sub. Once you own Guild Wars 2, you own it. And given the amount of hours I've got out of this game, Guild Wars 2 is probably the best value money I've ever spent on a video game. To celebrate the Steam launch, there's a link in the description. You can sign up, get a code, and grab the game on Steam, and then if you want, you can redeem the code for an experience boost pack, some karma boosting, and a 10-slot bag with a mini pet. This also saves you about $10, and it's free, so there's no reason not to. There's a new player guide on the website, although the in-game tutorial is actually really good. There's great build variety in the classes, and the mount system is so good it is now the standard by which other games are to be judged. Now, regular viewers will know that I don't accept sponsorships unless I can personally vouch for the product, and honestly, Guild Wars 2 is just a really good MMORPG game with a great deal of content that every player should at least try. But to sweeten the deal even more, one lucky user who uses this code will get the $100 pack on Steam, including all the Guild Wars 2 content, absolutely free. Check the video description for more details. Right, back to vertical versus horizontal design. Let's start with the basics. The most simple appeal of vertical design is the chasing of power. The best item, the best armor, the best spell, the numbers are simply higher. You can compare and contrast every item in the game and see at a glance, objectively, which is a better choice. Choice. A sword doing 1 damage compared to a sword doing 10 damage. Higher, number, better. This can lead to game design where a single choice is objectively correct for the majority of
of gaming situations, and that choice has no variations within itself. If there is a best weapon in the game, everyone wants to get it and use it. That is the power you chase. For vertical players, the actual experience of getting the power comes second to having the power itself. They value the reward over the process. In horizontal progression, it's less about the power and more about variation and experience. The process is now more important than the reward, because the reward isn't specifically any more powerful than what you already have. Imagine you have a weapon which does X amount of damage, and there's another weapon in the game which also does X damage but now looks different, or is achieved in a more difficult way. A good example would be the ornamental kits in Old School RuneScape or RuneScape 3. They make the weapon look different visually, but they act identical mechanically. You won't gain any extra power from having the weapon itself, but you will have the experience of getting it. The focus is on variations, not greater items. But how does this affect the game when you've got everything and new content has to be added? With vertical design focusing on the reward and horizontal focusing on the process, the risk for vertical comes in the form of, once a player has the power, why would they go through any process when they know it would reward a less powerful item? If your player base values being the most powerful and they are the most powerful, other content loses its appeal. This is a major problem with vertical design. It invalidates old content extremely quickly. If a dungeon drops a weapon or armor set and then a new dungeon drops a better one, the old dungeon simply becomes a stepping stone to the higher one, but then forgotten about once the higher one is achieved. Vertical progression attracts players who want to climb up, and everything lower than where they are is seen as pointless. New content doesn't become more of the game, it sometimes becomes the only part of the game worth doing. Ironically, an expansion doesn't actually expand a game if it becomes the only part of the game worth focusing on. Now, horizontal design often links together older content with newer content, because the focus isn't on outclassing, but supporting. This isn't to say the rewards for new content aren't more powerful. They can be but they are never completely eclipsed by new things, or the time taken to advance on the vertical ladder is still great enough that old content is still worth doing. Consider a new expansion in World of Warcraft. When something new comes out, the older content and the older expansions are often outclassed in terms of power. The best items from 10 years ago are superseded by average items from now. But for an excellent example of horizontal design in content, look at the Barrows armor in Old School RuneScape. The Barrows minigame released in 2005 and the rewards from it remained relevant for years. Indeed, Old School RuneScape itself released in 2013 and the Barrows minigame is still a vital part of a new player journey. Despite many similar rewards now existing, it's not been overshadowed. When an MMORPG receives new, high-level content, vertical MMOs often watch older content become irrelevant because the power level has risen, and horizontal MMOs watch older content become another piece in a greater puzzle as the variation increases. But both of these can lead to issues, with point three, power creep versus feature creep. If your game is vertical, players want more power. If your game is horizontal, players want more choice. Adding power is simple. Increase a number. Weapon do more damage. Armor stop more damage. Even releasing a new class or race like Neverwinter did with the metallic Dragonborn and just straight up giving them better passive buffs. Adding more power patch by patch is super simple, but it leads to the inevitable endgame of power creep. When everyone is godlike, no one is. Power is only powerful when compared to something less so. And when everyone is hitting millions of damage, the number itself isn't considered large. That's just normal. A player who wants to be considered powerful must be compared against a player of lesser power. So by increasing the power cap every update, you're adding small but constant windows of gameplay where the players race to achieve the increase in power and enjoy being more powerful for a short time before inevitably everyone catches up. So you increase it again, and you repeat this forever. Horizontal progression, however, may avoid that absurd degree of power creep, but it still faces the equally complex issue of feature creep. If a new update in a horizontal game can't simply make a number bigger, it needs to change something mechanically, adding a new choice, a new situational effect, a new experience for the player. A weapon which has elemental damage, or does more damage at night time, or armor which works better when you stand still. If you can't just make a number go up, you have to make the gameplay experience change. And while this is great in the short term, it can lead to a massive amount of intricate features being added 
which are overwhelming when a new player joins and has to understand all of them in one go. Feature creep can sometimes even be more insidious, because the enfranchised player base doesn't realise how complex their game has become as they've adapted to each feature change slowly. It doesn't feel much more different, because things were added one at a time. But then a new player joins and they're told about many, many systems added slowly over many years, and they're expected to understand how they all link together. Sometimes these negatives can actually combine, and you end up with an MMORPG adding updates or content which both increases the power level substantially enough to invalidate old content, and add new complex systems which are overwhelming for new or returning players. These types of updates are often met with major backlash from the player base, and result in people leaving. For a great example, see the evolution of combat for RuneScape back in the day. But this leads on to point four. Developers must know that power creep or feature creep exist, and they must realise the issue. So why do they do either one? Well, it's because the player base that that game is aiming at actually values the advantage they can gain from being the player to exploit that change. Players who enjoy games with power creep often enjoy the power creep, because it's a measurable way to be more powerful than someone else. This is especially prevalent in PvP games or on PvP servers, where creating a power imbalance in your favour is literally part of the experience. You can have a better weapon or a better set of armour, and you can use that power to defeat someone else. The imbalance is by design, and new players will struggle to beat old players because the maths simply doesn't allow it. A vertical progression game encourages players to climb the ladder by letting them compete with players higher up on it and losing, or compete with players lower down and winning. That's the revenge. This may be in direct PvP, or by playing with more powerful players, seeing them and thinking, I want to be that. If power creep is designed to encourage that competitive mentality by making power so easy to measure, what does horizontal progression do? Well, if it's PvP, it often focuses on the balancing of the experience, balancing the playing field. Now, regardless of the sponsorship, I would have still used Guild Wars 2 for this example. Having the missed PvP arena which levels everyone to max, gives everyone equal equipment, and lets you compete in a fair fight. But there are issues with this too. You're directly removing one of the core aspects of the RPG the progress, and now you're competing on the PvP scene against larger, more established games who specialise entirely in PvP. Ultimately, both of these approaches, adding increasing power or adding increasing features, serve to deepen the divide between the player base from the start and finish of the game, and this often ends up needing a stat squish or feature reset to fix which leads to point five. When the game simply becomes too vertical or too horizontal, and the gap between players too great, the game has to be brought back to a manageable size for the player base to actually play together, and resets can be complex in different ways. A power-based stat squish mostly just involves reducing the numbers, which never feels good because players feel like you're taking earned power away from them, but can sometimes be justified for the longevity of the game. And while I'm not a fan of the process of removing anything, I can understand the long-term goal they're going for. Like how Neverwinter briefly had damage numbers in the tens of millions, and had to reduce all numbers by a factor of several hundred before we ended up hitting trillions. A vertical power-based game has an unusual relationship with stat squishes. They will be needed more frequently, but because they're just reducing the numbers behind the scenes, they're actually very easy to do. Horizontal progress games, however, have a much harder time resetting to a manageable size, because the game grows not in numbers, but in features. And a stat squish would be more of a feature squish, removing excess mechanics or talents or skills. And this can involve changing the fundamental way in which certain playstyles will work. Neverwinter is again a good example. When Lifesteal, a stat which restored your own health by a portion of the damage you do, was removed, an entire style of tanking was removed from the game with it, and squishy players who relied on aggressive gameplay to survive were now useless, they were just squishy and dead. The feature squish and the removal of lifesteal actually made the game slower, and the combat less intense, which was something Neverwinter had pushed away from for many, many years. Resetting vertical power creep feels bad, but is relatively simple. Resetting horizontal feature creep is much more challenging because features are tied to the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. But let's imagine a major reset that does happen and you decide to take a break from the game, because no one likes to lose high numbers or skills they've come to enjoy. This brings up point six. Taking a break and returning feels very different for both types of design. 
We've all had that horrible feeling of returning to an RPG after a long time and thinking, what the hell was I even doing? I once returned to Chrono Trigger after a few months away and after staring at the screen for a minute I decided to just restart the whole game. Returning to an MMO is a daunting task and the vertical horizontal divide heavily changes that experience. Returning to a vertical game feels like starting again anyway. Your items and equipment are often useless and outclassed and the content you knew is not being run anymore. The player base have all moved on to the latest area. So so you're left fighting back up the ladder, doing content no one else is doing because it's just a step you need but they are past it. Vertical games are often called treadmill games. If you stop running, you fall off, and then you need to catch up. Your friends and guild will shoot off ahead. But there is one good side to this, a silver lining to this cloud. You've got a pretty good idea of what you need to be aiming for. You just head to whatever the highest number is or the newest expansion is. The beauty of having an objectively best choice is you can just make that choice. Returning to a horizontal game, however, is a bit different. Your equipment often retains its power, and your rare items retain their value because they've not been outclassed, they're now just a variation on something else. So the player base is still doing what you already know. They're just doing it in different ways. There are new systems you need to learn, or old skills revamped to work in new ways. I get this feeling whenever I return to old school RuneScape. My skills haven't gone anywhere, my equipment is still useful, there's just new stuff to do in various directions. Returning to a horizontal progression game often feels easier, because you feel that you've still got what you left, but now it's also harder to pick a direction, because there's no objectively correct or best thing. It's often a case of, what do you want to do? And more often than not, you'll end up thinking, well, I don't know what's worth doing. And all of this ultimately leads on to the final point. Vertical progression is focused on the satisfaction of the reward over the process. It values becoming powerful in a way others can see and then respect. It often leads to objectively correct choices in gameplay loops and character builds. Whereas horizontal progression is more about enjoying the process than the reward itself, and becoming powerful in a way that's personally relevant to you, but not necessarily more socially powerful than anyone else. Vertical games encourage the players to play by adding new things for the players to chase, the allure of power and the dominance over other players and over the game itself. In a vertical game, power is the driving force, the journey is simply a step on the route to power. Horizontal design adds content for the players to experience, and the value of the experience itself is the valuable thing, even if you have nothing to show for the experience beyond memories and enjoyment. The satisfaction of gaining power is replaced with the personal satisfaction of overcoming a gaming challenge. Here's an interesting example. In Guild Wars 1, you can actually use the bonus input to just get given some of the best weapons in the game from the very start. You can use them immediately. So you'd be thinking, why am I playing the game? There's very little I can get that's better than what's been given to me. But while I was playing, I realised that's not the point of Guild Wars 1. The numbers are incredibly low and the items are relatively easy to get. You play for the enjoyment of the process of playing, not necessarily the gaining of power. So when you log in to any MMO, ask yourself, why are you playing? Do you enjoy the process itself, or is the process simply a means to an end? Do you want to be objectively better and more powerful than others, or do you want to be as powerful in a different way? Do you want to be part of the race constantly pushing forward into the more powerful, more difficult content, or are you content to go and do the older stuff because it still has meaning to you and isn't yet outdated? Are you a vertical progress player, or a horizontal experience player? Let me know in the comments below. Another massive thank you to Guild Wars 2 for sponsoring this video. Use the link in the description to let them know that I sent you. If you enjoy your time in Tyria, feel free to join our Discord server. We're often doing jumping puzzles or world bosses. Cheers for your time, and as always, have a great day.